In today's video, we are going to have a look at the second type of loops in Python coding, which are called for loops. As you can see here, we've got while loops that we've already looked at in previous videos. And if you think back to those, I did tell you that while loops are generally run until a certain condition is met. So in this example here, these are the two lines of code that are going to be repeated over and over again in this loop until this condition here is met. So until our number is equal to 100, then we're going to keep printing these lines of code. Okay, so that's a while loop. Everything keeps running until a certain condition is met. Once that condition is met and the number equals 100, well, it jumps out of that loop and will continue processing any more code below it. Okay, what we're going to look at today, though, is for loops. All right, now for loops are generally used in Python for counting purposes. Okay, so we're going to do some similar kind of coding to what we did um, in that while loop example we just had up, where we're going to count to 100. Okay, now we could go the old way about it, where you print it out line by line, number by number, but that would be very tedious and that would take a very long time. It's pretty pointless. So let's get a for loop to count to 100 for us. Okay, I'll type the code in first and then I'll explain what's going on. So we start writing a for loop by putting in the keyword for. And let me write i in range 101 and then put a colon. On the next line, we print in brackets i. And that's it. And that is a for loop that will count to 100. Let me just show you what it does just to prove that it does work. Count to 100. Call it. And we'll run it. And there you have it. I know it's a bit annoying to scroll through, but we've got all the numbers going from 0 all the way down to 100. Okay. So I'll stop that and just quickly explain what's going on. So with a for loop, we always start with the word for just to tell the computer that we are creating a for loop. And then we set a variable. Okay, usually I say to have um, variables should have a meaningful name. But in for loops, a lot of people use the letter I. Don't ask me why. I couldn't tell you why they use that. But the letter I is common practice in a for loop. So let's just go with the letter I. And let me write in range 101. Okay, so this range function here will return a sequence of numbers to the screen. And it starts from zero. So it's basically going to print a sequence of numbers starting from zero. So we start at zero and go all the way up to 101, it would seem. But no, it actually goes to 100. But because for loops start at zero, we need to tell it to count 101 times, or loop over 101 times, so we actually get to 100. Okay, usually when you count, you start from number one and go one, two, three, four, five, and whatnot. But no, in for loops, they start at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's why when we are counting up to a certain number, always add one extra number to what you want to count to. So I want to count to 100, so I'll put 101 in brackets there. Hopefully that makes a bit of sense. Okay, so once we've written that first line, you put a colon at the end, and then you'll see that your code becomes indented. That's just showing that this code that's been indented is what we want to repeat or loop over and over and over again. And all we're doing is printing out the value of i. Now i is the variable that I said we set in this first line, and it starts at zero. Okay, remember for loops start at zero, and it sets this variable i to zero. And it prints it out. Okay, and then it just loops back around and moves to the next number. So i will now be equal to one. And we'll print that out, and it will be one. Loops back around, i will become two. And it just keeps going through that sequence of numbers all the way up to 100. Okay, that's in a nutshell how a very simple for loop works. It's used for counting all the way to 100. Okay, so let's get a little bit more fancy now. And what we're going to do is say, let's count from 50 to 100. So how do we write that? So I'm just going to delete those brackets there. Most of the code's the same. It says for i in range. Let's open up a new set of brackets and tell it where we want to start from. So we want to start from the number 25. Then we're going to put a comma, and we said we want to count to the number 50. So we'll write in 51 there. Remember, we go one step further than we actually want to count to. So for i in range 25 to 51, which should count all the numbers from 25 to 50. Let's save it and run it. 
Oops, I forgot to put a colon at the end. There we go. Let's see how it went. Starts at 25 and goes all the way down to 50. All right, so you can give your for loops a start value and a stop value. So when we should start counting and when we should stop counting. All right, we can go one step further than that as well now. Okay, let's say we want to count in steps of five. So we start at 25 and go 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. We can do that by just putting another comma at the end there after the 51 and just put in the number five. So that's the step that it's going to count up by. So we're going to print all the numbers from 25 to 50 in steps of five. Let's save it and run it. You'll see now what's been printed out, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. All right, so that is how you can do some simple counting using for loops in Python. So what I want to do now is make a little app, a little bit more meaningful than what we've just done. So I'm going to delete all the code we've got there. And we're going to do a countdown timer. So imagine a rocket is about to take off, and we want to count down from 10. When we get down to zero, we want to say blast off. Okay. So let's start by writing a new for loop. So we'll write for i in range. That's where it gets tricky. We're going to count backwards. So our starting point is going to be 10. We want to start our countdown at 10. We'll put a comma. We want it to finish. We'll say zero. We actually want it to finish at one. So we have to go one up from where we actually want to finish this time because we're counting backwards. So it will finish on one if we say zero. And the step is going to be minus one. So that means we start at 10 and we take off one each time our loop is run. So we'll go 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, and so on. All right, at the end of that line, put a colon and then simply write print and then write I. And that should give you a countdown from 10 to one. Let's just save it and test that to start with. Make sure that part's working. There we go, so we start at 10. And we loop down minus one step each time, printing out that variable each time we get down. And we stop when we get to one. Okay, remember to write zero because it has to be one up from where we actually want to count to. All right, and the last thing what I might do, I'm going to jump outside of that for loop now. So once that loop is finished running, I'm going to print a line of code that says blast off. So now when we run it, we go from 10 down to 1, and it says blast off. Okay, that looks good. But I'd like to make it look like an actual countdown. So the numbers actually count down one second at a time. So we can do that by importing some code into Python. Let me show you how to do it. At the top of my code, I'm going to import a library of code called time. Now this library of code that we're importing is code written by somebody else. We don't actually see that code. It's just running behind the scenes. Okay, but somebody else has written some code for us. So we're going to import that library of code. And then after we print I here, we're going to add in a line of code that says time.sleep and put one. And what that's saying is we're going to access that time library that we just imported. And inside that time library, there's a function or a little snippet of code called sleep. And it pauses the program for however long we want to pause it. So in this case, we want to pause it for one second. Once it's had a rest for one second, it loops back, back around and starts processing the code all over again. Okay, so time.sleep just means that we are pausing our program for however long we mention in the brackets. In this case, it's one second. All right, so let's save it and run it now, and you should see a countdown occur. So 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Hopefully when it gets to the end, it says blast off, it will end our program. There we go. So we've now got a little countdown timer. It goes from 10 to 1 and says blast off at the end. And that's all using our for loop. All right, we will use for loops a little bit more um, in our code. You'll see them come in really handy when we are counting through lists of objects in future tutorials. Okay, so I'll catch you in the next video.